All right, welcome back to Mental Health Matters. Woo! I am so glad you're back here today with us to talk about Steve. What am I going to do with my life? So, what are you going to do with your life? That's the question today. How is that for a way to start? Uh, you are listening to Mental Health Matters with Dr. Scott Terry, and we are talking about what do we want to do with our lives. It's uh, the second part of our show from last week where we're talking about careers and our purpose in life. You are listening to KRUU-FM 100.1 on your FM dial. You could also get to the archives at KRUU-FM at uh, .com. And you could find archives. We're going to have a YouTube channel soon. And you could also email me directly, Scott, S-C-O-T-T, at Ardent Center, A-R-D-E-N-T, C-E-N-T-E-R dot com. Scott at ArdentCenter.com if you need me or have a topic that you'd like us to explore or would like to be on the air. And we broadcast uh, Tuesdays at 6 Thursdays, and we broadcast uh, 12.30 on Thursdays, and of course, we're archived. So, I'm Dr. Tyree. Um, I am a mental health professional. I run the Arden Counseling Center, Arden Community Wellness Center. I am on the board of the Fairfield Mental Health Alliance, which I invite everyone to join to make a difference in your community and make a difference in the world. Steve. Tell us about yourself, and I know you've introduced yourself. Tell us about yourself and tell us something different than we knew before. Uh, different. Uh, my name is Steve Langrud, and uh, I'm a career counselor and executive coach and work with people and organizations in transition. Um, I told Scott about uh, my original career mission, which was to be a basketball <laughs> player. And, and, uh, I love it. And, and that was quickly... Uh, uh, thwarted by very actually kind words from a famous coach at the University of Indiana who Ooh. at the time said, you're a nice kid, but this isn't going to happen. <laughs> and, uh, wow. and, and led me on to uh, uh, prehistoric archaeology and a stint playing basketball in Mexico and uh, another stint being a ski bum in Vail, Colorado, wow. and uh, ultimately back to graduate school to become uh, a counselor and a therapist. Uh, and uh, in that process, you know, my, my first job uh, was being a counselor where I decided that, you know, what I really loved was uh, identifying the kind of core issues around decision making about our lives and our purpose. Mm. Which is what we were talking about before of like, what are the uh, four elements? I loved how you delineated them to, to what is the bigger concept of why I'm here and what do I want to do? Yeah, ev everybody wants to start with action and do something. They want to write a resume. They want to yeah. write a letter. They want to apply for a job. They want to change something. Yes. But what or I, I want to work at Google and you just have some like, yes, some abstract. Abs it's like, like, okay, great. Absolutely. But. But, that, but that doesn't help you actually move forward. And so what I've found in working, uh, you know, with over 15,000 people on this, Scott, wow. is that there's there's a very simple easy way to talk about it and that is to just break it into pieces and talk about the skills that you have that you really love using and you're good at the issues or topics that you want to spend all day thinking and talking about so that's about. number 1 number 2 is the issues so, or topics that you want to think about right number 3 is the kind of people that you want to be around when this happens and there are two groups they're your colleagues the people you spend all day working with and then the people you serve who's going to benefit from this work that you're doing and then the final piece the is four, number four number four is making numbers here the uh the environment in which you get the most energy doing this from the geography to the style to the location all those things that you know about yourself and um and again give you energy in the workplace fantastic and so today we're going to expound on this a little bit and to see you're going to give some case examples from students to lawyers to others and to think about how even if you're at a job you love right now, how you could even take this sense of energy, the sense of who you really are and how you're applying who you are even into the space, even if you don't change your job, have that awareness 
And so you could apply yourself even stronger, even more fully to have more satisfaction because that's really the goal here. It's not necessarily just getting a new job, right? Right. Absolutely. But that, but that's the presenting issue. That's the first thing people say is, if I just change, it'll be better. Well, you may change, but you end up with the same thing in a different place. Well, and as we gave you the example last time of a uh, relationship, yeah, you know, this person's not so good. Uh, you know, this one, hey, you know, maybe I'll uh, marry somebody who's half my age. Uh, well, okay, that works for a few minutes, and now I'm missing something else. Right. <laughs> right? And so it's, it's something else, you know, it, it's, it's really back to that larger sense of purpose and how I can apply who I am. It's not just another thing. It's not just more, 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 because more, more, more doesn't get you what you want. Right. It leaves you empty. And you could have, and everybody who doesn't have money always, well, if I only had money, I'd be happy. Well, no, that's not true. I have several people who I've worked with with lots of money. I have one woman I've worked with with $100 million. <laughs> you know, it's a <laughs> lot of money. Didn't make her happy. And the question isn't about the money. It's really who are you working with whatever it is you are working with. And so, you know, I love Maharishi's thought about this knower known and process of knowing. Who are you? What is the other? What is, what is it you know? And what's the best process or methodology to work with or be with that? And so if I'm thinking about all three, reconceptualizing me, looking at who I've created myself to be now, today, um, and what is that other, could be the career, it could be the job, it could be the thing, and then what's the best process to work with that thing? Because, you know, I love doing therapy, but if I was at an agency and I had a different kind of grind, I might not like this. It might be a burn for me, or I could excel and love it. You know, it's not necessarily the thing itself. It's who I'm being applying me in the best way to apply me to that. Did that make sense? Absolutely. And I, th I think that's one of the critical things that I found with clients is that that ability to own what they are and to say, this is what I bring with me all the time. Mm. And I get to choose where I apply it. And that, and that becomes a very important um, aspect. I think of a tenured college professor that I worked with on the East Coast who uh, called me and, and she said, you know, I've got tenure, I'm making money, I can stay as long as I want, I, I research, I write, I publish, and four people in the whole world read what I publish, mm. and only two of them care. <laughs> and she says, you know what, it's not enough. She says, this just isn't enough for me, and there has to be something else for me. Yeah, I, 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 lo I love that thought, because... I was talking to my old supervisor over my supervision. I was just in Chicago the other day. And he's written several books on supervision. And he comes from the great lineage of masters of therapy. What was really kept striking me is, you know, I have this goal of slowing down my practice not just my therapy practice, but of managing this large organization I run, which currently has 43 therapists and is growing rapidly. And what, what I um, come to is that I really want to develop these theories. I'm a theoretician by training, and that's something I'm really fascinated by and want to do. But I realize I'd be lucky if I got that book done um, out of these seven that I've got planned in the works here. <laughs> If 50 people in the world would bother to read it, and two of them would actually care and want to do anything with it. The goal isn't in the product. The goal is in the process and having satisfaction from being who you are. I, I was an artist, uh, I mentioned to people, and being an art is really about that same thing. If you don't have to be an artist, don't be an artist. But if it's compelling you, if you feel like this is who you are, then find an avenue to have both ends of that art work. One is that passion, as we talked about last time, but the other is that practicality. You have to be able to sell. Living under a viaduct, you don't have a whole lot of paint. It doesn't store <laughs> very well under a viaduct. You know, it drips under there and not so good. So we really have to have both aspects. 
And if your motivation to do something is just for the end goal, just to make the money, just to do the thing, just to get this great job, but you're not present, if you've lost yourself, you've lost your purpose and your passion, now what? Right. Yeah, I I think of one of the questions that I ask artists, uh, which is, um, one, can you not do this work? Mm, is, yes. it, is it possible to not do it? Are you going to do it no matter what, even if you are under the viaduct? <laughs> uh, and, and then, the, you know, and the second one is, are you any good at it? And this this kind of reality check of, I'm going to do it, and I'm I'm good at it. And I think even with this professor, you know, that I was talking about, um, I posed those questions to her. I said, you know, can you not do this work that you do? And she says, no. She says, I'm so curious about the topics. She said, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, are you good at it? And she says, of course. She says, I publish all the time. And I said, okay, then who's going to use it? She says, that's my issue. She says, those people aren't enough. She says, I want a real change to happen because of this work, this research I do. And so we, you know, worked over a few months uh, to to clarify and focus and to start to expand uh, what she knows about the world and about all the places where she could do what she does so well. Mm. She ultimately made a, a transition into a think tank where she's doing the exact same work, using the same skills, but she's producing white papers for the legislature. Ah. So she's writing about things that are being evaluated by people who can make decisions about money and resources to fund programs that support the kinds of research issues that she's found so fascinating throughout her academic career. I, I love it because it it really comes back to that, again, this notion, this larger conceptualization of who I really am. What is my real vision? And that vision could be applied in multiple ways. I still think of myself as an artist, even though my occupation is a therapist. And and when I'm doing therapy as art, I find the most satisfaction and the greatest success with clients. When I get stuck in administration and it's dry to me, that's what drives me crazy. (laughs) And so it's, it's, it's finding... Again, what you're good at, but also what's behind it and how that could be applied. They could be applied in a number of ways. Yeah, let, let me push you a step on that, yeah. Scott, and, and ask you: What does it look like when you when when I hear you say, "I want to," I see therapy as art. What does that look like? It means that it's a creative process. That it is an. I think of therapy as an art form. It is not a science. It is a creative endeavor of looking at possibilities and sitting with somebody's story and helping them grow to a a greater story. It's not just getting over a problem. It's developing a greater sense of self and a a larger sense of self that really can incorporate being who you are going forward, not going back to what was. And to me, that art is the sense is the art of possibility mm. the art of what can be not what was but and that's why I'm not a traditional therapist but what can be my future focus mentality how what is that and how do I start living that today because that's really where your power comes from yeah i think it's it's really great to hear you describe it in that detail and with that kind of nuance because I think it's a great example for our listeners to be able to think about themselves in a deeper way to be able to say something that that is a little unclear or vague on the surface but sounds like it's very clear um, mm, mm. but to but to dive down one more step and to describe what it looks like so that other people can see it too provides such clarity and such focus and the ability to really go out and seek that and find it. Mm, thank you. Um, by the way, you are listening to Mental Health Matters on KRUU-FM 100.1 on FM dial, archived everywhere at www.kruufm.com. And you could email us at scott at ardencenter.com for, to contact me directly or email the station, of course, at mentalhealthmatters.com and um, at KRUUFM, of course. And um, please do uh, be in touch with us. Let us be part of your community and make a difference here. 
We are talking today about... Steve? What am I going to do with my life? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with my life? Um, I was going to give you uh, another example um, that I give with clients where I, start, where I say sometimes what I want you to do is also start with the fantasy. And what does that fantasy tell you about yourself? So I come up with this absurd fantasy, which, by the way, isn't quite true, um, but I was inspired. Um, actually, I'm more inspired after seeing that Steve Jobs movie, by the way. Hmm. And I'm so. All right. So but I'll use the other one. So uh, the fantasy job is I want to be a rocket scientist. I, w- I want to be a rocket man. You know, I, I love David Bowie. So I want to be a rocket man. I don't know. <laughs> what is it, What would that tell you about me? Right? What are the characteristics underlying being uh, a spaceman? Right? It means that I'm adventurous. It means I'm, um, I don't know, I can't even think of all the, <laughs> you know, type A personality, you know, risk taker, whatever it is. But if I think about all those characteristics and I go, but what is it really that matters to me? Am I, you know, am I ever going to be a rocket man, by the way? No. (laughs) But what does matter to me is this thought of trying to be bold to make a difference. And so I could even think of something even in that absurd example. You know, what what is underlying that characteristic? What is underlying that field of interest? Yeah, and I think that's you know a really great you know catchphrase. If you would say that being bold to make a difference, mm. that wherever you were professionally or personally, that would be a characteristic that you would carry with you. And I think that's something that's so important to be able to, as you did, to articulate, but then to own and say, whatever role you're in, you are still going to be bold to make a difference in that role. Yes, and and that is because it's part of you. And that, and that comes with you, and it's not going to leave you. And so wherever you show up, whatever you do, that's one of the things people will experience about you. And that if you don't have that, that's going to be something you're going to miss and that you're going to have to try and find. And that if you don't find it and if it's not there, you will create it. Exactly. And, and, and so what I'm looking for is, is that application of that bold to make a difference, which I love, by the way. You know, and and so it's not necessarily the fantasy job of being a rocket man or whatever it is. You know, if I I, I, I watched that Steve Jobs movie and I was just mesmerized by who he was. His personality was so strong. And I love how he said, you know, uh, Wozniak said to him, you know, like Woz said, look, I'm the guy who does the architecture and I'm the I'm the coder I'm the one who does everything what do you do Steve and he goes you know and he's sitting in this orchestra pit and he said I'm I'm the conductor that's what I do I see the whole picture and I see how each individual nuance of each instrument should be played together to create something bigger that's what I do and he couldn't help be but who he was and if it wasn't computers, it could have been a million other things. It wasn't about, and that's how come starting with the thing itself, starting with the action without the vision, misses the whole point of what we're doing. Right, and even and even more so in our society, starting with a title, you know, which everybody mm. wants to start with a title and then figure it out. And it, and I can tell you from experience that never works. I think of. Um, a large client base I have, which are male attorneys in their 40s Ooh. and 50s. Give us an example. Um, I think of you know one man in particular mm-hmm. who um, had gone to the great a great undergraduate school. He'd gone to a great law school. He was in practice. He was a partner. Uh, he had plenty of money. He had all the things that you would want. Um, and one of the things that he wanted most was to own a horse farm. Ooh. And so at some point he had bought a horse farm and we were talking and I said, how many times have you been to your farm? He says, well, <laughs> he says, I'm actually, I'm pretty embarrassed to say this. He says, I've never been there. Wow. And I said, well, what's the point of having this horse farm that you've dreamed about and you've never been there? And he says, 
that's why I'm here. He says, I, I have to change something. Yeah. And so, again, we went back to deconstructing him and talking about what's, what's your sense of purpose and what is it about you know, your life and your profession that you love and that you're good at and that you want to keep. Do you, do you need to change? Do you not need to be a lawyer? Mm. Do you need to stay a lawyer and change something else? And, and what we came up to after you know, talking was he said, you know, I really do love the law. And he was able to articulate the pieces that he loved. And he said, I'm just in the wrong practice area. And he said, I don't, I don't want to leave the law. He said, I don't want to run a horse farm. He says, I like my horses and I'm going to go see them and do the, spend yeah. more time there. He's, and so he actually made a shift out of that practice that he was in and he went and started his own firm and focused only on intellectual property mm. for a very small segment of the technology industry that wow. he loved. And so he was, he had isolated the activities down to the things and the skills he loved the most and doing them with the people he wanted to serve most. Mm. And that was really the key issue for him is he wanted to spend 90% of his time with those people. And he wasn't. He was spending a lot of time as a partner managing and doing administration and doing things that weren't in kind of that sweet spot for him. Mm. But it wasn't until he stepped back, clarified, articulated that he was able to see, this is how I then, and you've said this so many times so well, take action to move me into that place that I need to be. Yes, and action has to be there. All we're saying is, like when everything, have balance. Have that vision. Have Find that passion, but also have that connection, just like in a relationship. Have, you know, get to that action stuff, because without action, it's all talk. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem I see in a lot of therapeutic modalities, is we emote, we emote, we, you know, what's the old cliche, how do you feel about that, <laughs> right? Or what do I think about it? Well, that's great. But if you don't get to an action step and do something about it, you're trapped. But if you also, on the converse side, if you don't get to that vision of who am I and what is it I really want to create in this life, regardless of if we're talking some traumas or personal stuff or we're talking about being a lawyer. No, it's, it's not really about leaving law and it's not about the money. It's about doing something that works in a more productive way for me. Yeah, I think about, you know, two weeks ago, I got uh, an unexpected email from a young man who I'd worked with about three years ago, mm. and I hadn't heard from him since. And he sent me an email, and he says, hey, I just, I just wanted to get in touch with you and let you know what's happened to me in the last three years. Mm. He says, when we talked, I was planning to go into a, a career in economics. And I was looking at my first job, and we had this. So he was this, a college student when you originally he was a, met him. He was a college student when I met him. Okay, good. And he um, he said I was making these decisions about what was going to happen, and he says through the conversation, as you may remember, it came out. He said I didn't really want to do that, um, but I didn't feel like I had any support or any permission or any vision. And he said, "Here's what happened." He said I spent the next three years traveling. He said, wow. I, I went to Asia and I traveled around. He said, I then um, got a job and worked for a while, and then I kept traveling. He says, I then moved to Aspen and got a job to make some more money. And he says, while I was in Aspen, I met my fiance, and then she and I are going to Argentina, and we're going to work for six months in Argentina, and then I'm going to come back and move to New York City and start a career in economics and finance really and he says it's come full circle he said but i'm a very different me going into this than i was three years ago and he said that wouldn't have happened without me really owning what i wanted to do and what was important to me at the moment so it wasn't about again that end point he didn't he hadn't come to his own owned his own vision absolutely so what so in that case it wasn't about oh okay i should do something different with that skill set but it was also is like no this is what i should do i'm just not ready to do that right he had the, he had this kind of unarticulated feeling this intuition that yeah. i'm i'm not quite where i need to be and i need something to fill that in and he said it happened to be 
through that travel and that work and that and this meeting of that other people. That sense of exploration. Absolutely. To yeah. give me the sense of purpose that I now am at complete peace with what I'm going to do next. Wow. Yeah. I certainly have had that experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I had that with my relationship where I was with the love of my life uh, 25 some years ago. <laughs> and and we had dated for nine months and it was wonderful, but we were just we were more like best friends kind of thing is like, are we supposed to, but it, something didn't work. And what didn't work was me. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. And so when we came back together, I was a new me. And I, was, I would say, well, why couldn't I have just been where I was then? You know, that whole sense of regret and remorse. And it's like, no, I don't believe in regret and remorse. I don't believe in judgment or shame or regret or guilt or any of that stuff i needed to be where i needed to be then to grow into who i was who i am today so i could actually be with that person because i could be who i need to be so she could be who she needs to be and we could then be <laughs> partners together yeah i think we really underestimate that need for space yes <laughs> <laughs> so but i think it's the same thing with careers you know yeah, absolutely. People need to uh, try. And I think, you know, the, well, I, I think one of your great models for mental health is Woody Allen, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But what Woody Allen said that's, that's pertinent is uh, 80% of success is showing up. And I think, you know, when I think about that with careers, I think 80% of making the decision is showing up and having an experience that allows you to reflect. And I think this isn't something that you can sit and think about. This is something you have to go out and try. And you have to have experiences and you have to get out in the middle of things before you can make any really solid decisions. Yeah, yeah, a absolutely. And like I was saying before, that know or know in a process of knowing where I started with. You know, you have to know you. You have to have that, to allow yourself to find and be with you and own that vision so that you could know the other, in this case, economics, that career. And then what's the best process, the best way to go about developing that? So it really, you know, the, all three come hand in hand. Yeah, I think the other piece is, as you've talked about your relationship, is having someone there who's supporting mm. and accepting and being on the other end of that. And I think so many times um, when I work with clients, they feel like they're all by themselves, yeah. that they're going through it alone, that no one understands, that there's no... But there's always somebody there who wants to support you if you're willing to let them. And, and I, I think one of the things, you know, that uh, especially with young people and with partners, you know, with, with families around you um, and people who are friends and want to support, to be able to, uh, to really ask good, open-ended questions, to be supportive, to resist what we want to do most, which is to give advice. And to listen, to create some safe, respectful place, you know, for people to just talk and to share what they're thinking about and to receive that and to help them clarify. And I think and that develop really that process, you know, to be with them while they're developing that process of who they are themselves. Some so often, especially as men, we want to fix it. We want to. OK, here's the answer. And it's like, no, sometimes it's not about that. Sometimes people need to work through the problem. It's the process is the goal, not the goal itself. Right. Yeah, I, I think that's so clear with what, what I've learned with my partner. She said, I don't need your advice. She says, I just need you to listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so to be able to really have that proactive kind of dialogue, to be able to say, do you want me to help you solve this or do you want me to listen? Or you yes. know, have, having a conversation about what's the most helpful thing I could do for you right now yeah. um, is really an important part of having that relationship when it comes to making some kind of big change like your career. Absolutely. And we are out of time. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> and thank you for that last final thought. It's such a beautiful thought of like really allowing yourself to be there for somebody as you're there for yourself and be there for you today. Thank you for listening today. And Steve, what was our topic today? What am I going to do with my life? Okay, it's time <laughs> to get to it, everybody. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks. <laughs>